Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Excellence in Road Safety Awards 2022. My name is Alexandra Humphreys-Buck from Ricardo, and I will quickly talk you through the housekeeping. Cloakroom and toilets are to the left as you exit the double doors. There is internet Wi-Fi available, and the network is called Bluepoint Visitor, and there's no password needed to connect to it. And we would be very grateful if you use the hashtag ERSC Awards 22 when you share any social media posts during the ceremony. There is no fire alarm planned today, so if you hear the fire alarm, it will be a real one. Um, there are two emergency exits. Um, the staircase and then the assembly point is outside the building but there will also be staff from the conference venue to guide us. Can I please invite you all to put your mobile phones onto silent mode so we don't disturb the ceremony. Um, please be aware that we will be taking photographs uh, during the ceremony and also that the meeting will be live streamed and recorded. And can I invite those of you sitting at the back maybe to come a little bit closer to the front so it looks nicer for the online stream. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, I now hand over to Christian. Thank you, Alexandra, and good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Smith. I am uh, Director for Land Transport at the European Commission um, and also European Road Safety Coordinator since um, June. Um, very nice to meet you all, um, and uh, I will be your host this, uh, this afternoon. A warm welcome to all of you, our guests here in the audience, live in, in Brussels, but of course also a warm welcome to all of you online. Uh, 100 people have registered. Uh, uh, in the room and in uh, cyberspace, you are all warmly welcome. Uh, this is um, a great opportunity to showcase the uh, important work, examples of what organizations like the ones you represent can do. We will hopefully, with your work and uh, the prizes today, inspire even more work on, on road safety initiatives and help meet the targets that we all share the Vision Zero uh, goal, halving road uh, death and serious injuries by 2030, and of course, completely eliminating them altogether by 2050. The categories of the, the awards, as you may know, differ every year. And uh, this year, um, we are trying to shine a light on four specific issues of road safety to give an opportunity to share uh, good practice and possibly apply them. So for 2022, the categories are uh, the following four. The best application of the safe system approach and any component of it. Secondly, the best application of technology uh, in road safety. Thirdly, the best road safety project targeting young people. This is the European Year of Youth. Uh, and fourthly, the best initiative focused on professional drivers. We had around 100 applications uh, and shortlisted, uh, I think, 15 projects, but there can only be four winners. And this is uh, where we will hopefully make your days or break your hearts. Um, we will see uh, what happens. Uh, before that, I'd like to warmly uh, thank the judges, uh, because this, of course, was not done um, in a back room in Brussels. This was done by a very professional jury, uh, a panel of judges whose expertise is invaluable and widely uh, recognized. So uh, in the panel, Antonio Avenoso, Executive Director of the European Traffic Safety Council, Flor Lieshout, Executive Director of Youth for Road Safety, yours, and uh, Donna Price, Co-Chair of the International Road Victim Partnership, along with uh, my collaborators, of course, kept an eye, sitting right here, Claire, Vesna, and Sarah, thank you for all the work that you've done on this and continue to do. And also representatives of Ricardo and Vias who coordinate the European Road Safety Charter. So I feel very confident that the winners chosen 
were the right ones and chosen in complete fairness. Maybe just a few uh, um, words on the agenda today. We will first have a message from um, our Commissioner for Transport, Adina Balian. This will then be followed by um, an address from Vasiliki Denil Melona, President of the Hellenic Road Safety um, Institute and Greek National Relay for the Charter. Then, in the first half of our program, we'll have two awards. The two awards on safe system and technology. And then we have a second uh, address from uh, the manager of the VS Institute here in Belgium and Belgian National Relay. We will then proceed with uh, our second part of the award ceremony, the awards for uh, best uh, uh, projects on young people and on professional drivers. And after that, um, we will practice a little bit of direct democracy because among the four winners, you will vote here in the room and online the best of the four the winner of the winners. Um, after that, uh, we will give uh, that prize, the Jacques Perrault Award. Um, we will also ask the winners to join us on stage for a panel discussion so that uh, uh, they can explain more about their projects. I can ask them some tricky questions, and so can you. Um, and with that, we will, I hope, have uh, concluded 90 minutes um, of uh, very inspiring and uh, useful discussions. With that, let's kick off. Let's uh, first hear the message from um, Adina Valian, the European Commissioner for Transport. In the 2022 Excellence Your Road Safety Award, an opportunity to celebrate your fantastic projects. Projects that year after year help save lives on our roads. This project large and small, are needed now more than ever. In 2021, we saw a 5% increase in the number of deaths on our roads, compared to a 70% decrease in 2020. In some countries, the striking reductions that we saw during the COVID lockdowns have been maintained. In others, the trend has reversed. The figures for 2022 are very worrying. In some countries, we are seeing increases of up to 40%. Our aim is a 50% reduction in road deaths by 2030. If we keep on the current path, we quite simply won't get there. We all need to do more. We need to focus on every element of the safe system, infrastructure, vehicles, road use, and post-crash care. On our side, we put road safety in the core of our proposals. The General Vehicle Safety Regulation came into force this July, increasing safety both inside and outside the vehicle. We are negotiating rules for the new TNT network that will make these key transport arteries safer as well as more efficient. And we will be working to implement our new urban mobility framework, making our cities safer, healthier, and more climate friendly. We also plan to revise current rules on driving licenses, addressing requirements for driver education and training. When revising the cross-border enforcement directive, we will improve cooperation between member states on road safety penalties. Our upcoming roadworthiness package with better rules on vehicle inspections will be another step in limiting accidents related with technical deficiencies or tampering. It will also ensure that all driver assistance systems, which are key for road safety, function correctly during the whole lifespan of a vehicle. But we also need concerted action at national level. It's great to see member states revising their road safety strategies, and I know many were rolled out last year. I'm also happy to see national authorities learning from their counterparts in areas like road infrastructure, enforcement of traffic rules, and education of specific target groups. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of cooperation as we go forward. Shared ownership of road safety goals across government and society is key to success. And this is where you come in. As members of the European Road Safety Charter, we can forge alliances, we can help others combine road safety with other goals such as sustainability, urban regeneration, 
public health and social equality. It's time for road safety to go mainstream, and I'm happy that I can count on you, the members of the European Road Safety Charter, to be my allies on this path. Thank you. Commissioner, reminding us, reminding me that we need to do more, um, and therefore I turn to you, of course, help me do more, uh, because as you can hear, some of the figures for 2021 are indeed worrying. Um, and on that note, uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Vasily Gidanili Milona, President of the Hellenic Road Safety Institute and National Relay for Greece. Um, about your background, Vasiliki, you are president of the Hellenic Road Safety Institute called Palos Milonas, um, the name, I believe, of your son who tragically died uh, 22 years old in an accident. You uh, have been uh, um, honored in Greece and in Europe with civil awards from organizations and authorities. So your presentation, I'm sure, will um, tell us about what Greece is doing and can do to keep the roads in Greece safe. Vasiliki. The floor is yours, please. Thank you, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends. It is a great pleasure and honor to address you in this prestigious event that values the civil society. The Road Safety Institute has been one of the first members to join the European Road Safety Park Charter, the largest civil society platform on road safety. The Charter has indeed strengthened road safety culture across Europe, creating values and benefits for the society and its members. Aris Ivanos Milonas was established 17 years ago after the unfair tragic loss of my son Panos. 22 years old, he was completing his studies at the University of Patras and being the youngest accredited journalist in the World Rally Championship. A talented young man who had a bright future ahead, but his life ended unexpectedly due to a reckless driver's behavior. By that time, Greece counted more than 1,600 deaths every year, with the majority being young people and Panos' death gave rise to a protest of thousands of citizens, starting from his fellow university students and professors and the car press. The whole civil society demanded to stop the carnage on the roads. RSI Panos Milonas was created with the vision of a world without road crashes, and our aim is to support the society and the government and authorities for no more deaths and injuries on the roads of Greece. Our activity is based on three pillars. Working together with the government, being though an independent organization, doing a lot for education and advocacy, and also infrastructure promoting EU directives and best practices. Our work, along with the civil society and authorities, as well as an extended and modernized motorway network implemented, has contributed to the reduction of fatalities in Greece by 54% during the de last decade, the EU country that achieved the target of having fatalities. Adopting the charter principles, we believe that civil society has an important role to play for road safety, acting locally, supporting national policies, bringing stakeholders together, which we do a lot in RSI, and sharing knowledge and results within the European policy framework and the national plan objectives. Greece is a prime uh, tourist organization for holidays, excellent weather, natural beauty, and a long history. With thousands of islands and 16 kilometers of coastline, Greece has developed uh, over decades a well-established uh, tourism industry. In 2019, the year before the pandemic, Greece hosted more than 31 million tourists, three times the country's population. The international arrivals fell to 7 million in 2020, doubled in 2021, 
And during this year, arrivals are expected to exceed the pre-pandemic levels. But tourist regions mark the double number of fatalities compared to not touristing uh, regions. Those affected are mainly young, male and female, powered two-wheelers, most often involved in a road crash due to inappropriate human behavior. What studies have also shown is that foreign tourists tend not to conform with traffic rules during their stay in Greece, a non-supportive envi environment, unfortunately. A weak traffic safety culture and a lack of enforcement are the main resources, the main reasons. In the light of this situation, RSI has undertaken a number of activities in collaboration with authorities and major organizations for the protection of natives and foreign tourists during the summer season. Every year, during the last 10 years, committed through the Charter, we conduct a summer campaign in collaboration with the Athens International Airport, sending a strong message to all visitors to enjoy visiting Greece, but at the same time to stay safe on the road. This message has been adapted during the COVID-19 pandemic period in order to meet, to meet also the priorities of another global crisis. So the message was adapting to stay, stay safe on and off the road. Those posters you see are showcased in huge billboards at the arrivals area as well as in the parking facilities of the Athens airport. The campaign is also supplemented by printed material distributed by motorways and municipalities, vehicle rental companies, social media posts, as well as a TV and radio spot uh, campaign broadcasted at social messages upon approval of the National Road and Television Council. This activity addresses drink driving. RSI is one of the most active organizations implementing each October the European Night Without Accidents, engaging more than 700 volunteers in 40 city, cities in one night. Last Saturday, it happened again with great success as usual, and it was really emotional and empowering. We also organized this event during summer in touristic areas, promoting the concept of the designated driver, as well as informing young people about the risks of driving under the influence of alcohol. Touristic regions should invest into a more sustainable urban mobility planning for safer roads for the reduction of fatalities. In this context, RSI tries to promote cyclic and the use of public transport through various activities. Cycling info points, training parks, cultural cycling events at the historical center, centers, and video spots promoting active and sustainable mobility. And now comes the pit stop at the motorways. Apart from human behavior, technology is also an important factor. And first comes vehicle safety. At motorways rest areas, we conduct our so-called pit stop technical controls, such as for tires, lights, windscreen, wipers, children restraints, checks. We supplement this action with informative and training activities for the drivers, as well as the whole family when in the car. Infrastructure. A crucial aspect of a safe system are safe roads and roadsides. Through the implementation of exemplary pilot projects for infrastructure interventions and upgrade at major touristic areas, such as you can see pictures from Mykonos and Heraklion airports, Piraeus port and Devia island, we try to improve safety for locals and visitors at the same time throughout the year and mainly during summer when traffic volumes are much higher. Concluding, relevant activities have been also proposed for implementation at national level during the development of the National Road Safety Plan, as we believe that national and regional road safety plans should also take tourism into consideration. This should include a combination of actions on road, safe, on road user behavior, road infrastructure and vehicles, as well as enhanced enforcement 
with the ultimate goal to develop a strong traffic safety culture. It is within our plans at RSI to organize campaigns and initiatives in each region taking advantage of the EU funds at the period to 2027. Concluding, I wish to highlight the importance of the EU safety policy framework for reducing deaths and serious injuries by 50% in the decade and reaching zero by 2050, as well as the importance of the eight specific and measurable KPIs, which we should all consider and support the implementation in our countries. Strong commitment and actions targeting education, technology and enforcement will help integrate the principles of Vision Zero to the everyday lives of natives and visitors so as to keep alive the improvements achieved at national level and further strengthen the European Union as a pioneer regarding road safety. It is in our hands to maintain Europe as the safest place in the world, safe for each European citizen, safe for every visitor. Our commitment indeed, indeed saves life. My sincere thanks to the Charter team for a constructive collaboration and thank you all very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear Vasiliki, and uh, thank you for your policy recommendations, but also thank you for your work and your commitment. It is clear that you, um, you are a proud mother of Panos, but I think he is also proud of the work that you are doing. And all parents, uh, mothers and fathers, owe you a debt of gratitude uh, for preventing uh, future accidents in, in Greece. So thank you for reminding of us this um, as we now turn to the awards. So, the first award is indeed for the component of a safe systems approach. Very pleased to uh, move on to this because the safe system is indeed the bedrock of our policy approach uh, uh, on which all policy me measures are made. It covers everything from safe vehicles to safe infrastructure to road safe use and to better post cr crash care. So um, this category recognizes the best application in any of these uh, components. And let me now read out the shortlisted finalists uh, in this category. Uh, starting from the top to the right, the biggest challenge I will have for this afternoon, it is in Polish, <laughs> and I've sought advice from my, uh, from my collaborators in the team. So here goes. Centrum Apologies to the Polish speakers. <laughs> this is the Road Traffic Safety Center from Poland um, with their initiative entitled Safe Motorways, a, um, a social campaign. They engaged a series uh, of events addressing the safe use of roads for all road users, including children, and bringing together the road safety and health sectors. They provided free health checks and helped in the distribution of defibrillators. Second shortlisted in this category, Egopix from Czechia, with their uh, long-term educational program safety of seniors in transport. The aim of this project is to help older people to navigate road traffic safely. It features a large-scale education campaign for seniors featuring over 500 lectures and educational packages. The third shortlisted um, AICA ITV from Spain um, with their project, if you care about it, get a roadworthiness test done. This is the title. This project uh, aimed at raising awareness among young people in particular on the need to have their vehicles passed uh, the periodic vehicle test, confirming that it is safe to drive. This project included uh, an advertisement campaign highlighting how vehicles testing can save lives. And fourthly, last but not least, Zavod uh, Resevalni Pas, or the Rescue Belt Institute from Slovenia, with their project Rescue Lanes. This initiative underlies the importance of creating rescue lanes for emergency services during traffic jams on motorways 
It increases awareness of what is the correct behavior at the scene of crashes and educates the public on the difficulty that emergency responders face on the roads. Um, congratulations to all the shortlisters listed uh, initiatives. They are all very impressive. But, thank you. And the winner is... Zavod Rasevalny Pass. So you get it, in Slovenia, you go through the middle, yes? <laughs> this project was uh, developed by a firefighter, or uh, I believe indeed an ambulance driver and uh, paramedic, um, who of course better than any other, any other one in this room understands um, the importance of uh, accessing quickly, creating these rescue lanes in traffic, um, and saving time and saving lives um, that uh, 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 otherwise could be lost. The project was rolled out from the bottom up um, with very limited resources, making it something that can be easily replicated elsewhere. And in fact, the success is, uh, I understand from our winner, uh, also easily measurable with results already seen, a direct impact on the quality of the rescue operation and therefore survival of uh, victims. This award gives us an opportunity to highlight the vital role that emergency services play in improving road safety and to recognize how important they are for all road victims. With that, I would like to invite the winner on stage, Mr. Anse Albrecht, please join us for an acceptance speech. short. Uh, I would like to, to thank you for uh, this outstanding recognition. Uh, this award uh, will give us more power and energy to work in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, and, and so we will come back to you and hear more from you during the, uh, the panel. We now move to the second, um, the second award, which is for technology. This uh, category includes applications showcasing how technology can be used to improve road safety. And the shortlisted finalists in this category are, it's a little bit easier, there are only three. I'll start with the one I'm Easy is with Riksförbundet M in Sweden for their project M Connect. This is an application that rewards smart drivers. It uses artificial intelligence to monitor and analyze different variables related to things like speed, attention, smooth maneuvering, and it then rewards smart drivers through discounts and other initiatives and incentives. The second shortlisted uh, program is ANWB from the Netherlands with its streetwise traffic application. This project recognizes the importance 
of kids starting to learn about road safety from an early age, especially when it comes to riding a bike, something they tend to do in the Netherlands, as you may know, and has incorporated a game to encourage the targeted audience. And then thirdly, from Germany, the Initiative für sichere Straßen, or the Safe Roads Initiative from, it, from Germany, with its EDAA plus hazard score map. So this is an app that enables early detection of road coalition hotspots using smart data. It uh, blends data from the federal states, the traffic coalition, uh, coalition data, crowdsourced data shared by road users, and vehicle kinematic data. These are the shortlist companies and initiatives in the technology category. And the winner is... Initiative für sichere Straßen. Congratulations. Um, this project was chosen um, as winner because it's a real life example of how you can use big uh, data uh, for the good uh, uh, causes in our daily lives. The technical side of this project is very strong. It's very well uh, executed, so well executed that I've invited the winners to roll out the application here in Belgium. I have a few spots I would like to po point out when I ride my bike to work every day. I would like to click, click a few. Um, and also, this winner, uh, instead of the negative energy on angry YouTube social medias, actually you turn it into something actionable, good, objective, that policymakers um, can use. So it provides a platform to, for users, road users, to express their concerns, their frustrations, but not just anger, action and, and, and change. And therefore, uh, it brings together all kinds of stakeholders with their points of views, with regional authorities, police departments, infrastructure managers, um, and therefore uh, uh, is a very worthy winner. I should also say the judges very much liked uh, the fact that uh, the projects actually work. It has a real measurable impact on road safety. So to accept the award, I'm very happy to invite Arno uh, Walter, CEO of the initiative, to come to the stage and accept the award. Please. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are very excited to receive this award of the European Safety Charter. For us, it also shows that uh, actually proactive risk mapping and identifying uh, danger spots in the road network early enough is not only important for Germany, where we started our project, but actually very relevant also internationally and has received this recognition today, which we are very, very excited and, and happy about. And uh, yeah, we encourage everyone to, to join our initiative because it's, 
easy to implement. It's not easy, it takes some work, but uh, <laughs> the approach can be implemented in any other country and uh, we stay committed to the Vision Zero, saving lives and uh, therefore we also would like to thank very much all our partners uh, which have worked with us on the project which are the University of Aachen, the University of the German Police, uh, DTV Traffic Consult and also PTV Group and uh, we also received report, uh, support from the German Ministry of, of Transport um, as part of the M Fund initiative and yes we hope to um, also receive more support from other countries and organizations that are interested in the approach. And thanks a lot also for the European Road Safety Charter for giving this visibility to road safety, which besides all the topics that are around in the world and very important road safety deserves more work and visibility. So thank you very much for your dedication to this great work and initiative. Thank you very much, Arno, and again, we will have you back for the panel, uh, but please use this prize to roll out your application across Europe. Um, I hope this will help uh, leverage that influence. With that, um, we are now turning to our second presentation, our second speaker, Dr. Isabel Verve, um, a Knowledge Group Manager in Road Safety at the VS Institute here in Belgium, where she leads a variety of projects. She's a doctor in criminology and a master in European criminology and criminal justice systems. Isabel is part of the charter delivery uh, team responsible for the um, coordination and animation of the network um, of national relays, but also acts as a national relay for Belgium. Isabel is here to talk uh, to us about children and the charter. So Isabel, please welcome, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to give you a presentation about youth and road safety and uh, the charter. How do youngsters move in traffic? Firstly, they are pedestrians. They walk over the streets. Um, they're also riding a bike. They're also using all kinds of new modalities of transport. And we, for example, we saw in our Belgian accident rates that these new modalities of transport like an e-step are also quite present in the accident rates. They also use, youngsters also use public transport, um, but they're also yeah, often playing on public ground. They're meeting each other, they're going out on each other, uh, they're going out with each other, so they're, yeah, they're using the public ground, and which is of course often nearby public roads. So to a certain extent, they're quite independent road users, but on the other hand, to a large extent, they're quite also independent because they're to a large extent dependent of, for example, their parents. When you're 15, 16, 17 year old, when you do not have a car yet or when you do not have a driving license, well, then you're into a large extent dependent, for example, for of your parents who drive you with a car wherever you want to go. And at a sudden age, you have your driving license. You have your driving license and you're able to drive the car, you're able to drive a motorcycle. But if we zoom into the accident statistics, into the accident rates, if we have a profound look into these accident rates, then we see that youngsters are quite present in these accident rates, unfortunately. They're quite present if we compare them to the, the amount they take into the general population. And this has some reasons. Firstly, they're quite inexperienced. So they're quite they're new drivers. They're, they do not have a lot of experience while driving a car. Secondly, they're also often keen to take some risks. So that is another reason why they're often present into these accident rates. And thirdly, their ability to recognize potential hazards and to react in an appropriate way is not that developed yet or is less developed or even underdeveloped. If we have a look at um, the statistics of uh, the European transport, I'm sorry for this, I'm going backward. If we have a look at um, the statistics of the report of the European Transport Safety Council, uh, which was published last year, and it's this, this report uh, 
particularly paid attention to road deaths and the amount which um, yeah which and the amount of youngsters which are, are taking part also in this kind of road deaths then they concluded that one fifth was killed on the roads that these were young people over the last 10 years so one fifth is killed on the road one fifth of the young people are uh, involved into road deaths so this is quite a negative a quite depressing uh, number of course um, one fifth of them were killed on the roads. Um, they, the definition of young people is in their report related to 15 to 13 years old. And I know there are quite some differences if we are looking into the definition of youngsters. So some say 15 to 24 and so on, but they use uh, 15 to 30 years old. It are often men. They are often uh, involved in road collisions, and two-fifths of all fatal collisions involve a young driver. So we need to pay particular attention also to a young driver. If we have a look at uh, the general causes of that amongst the population aged between 15 and 30, then we see that um, road deaths are responsible for 18%. When we hear this number, when we see these numbers, we can only say that this kid, is, this kid, this youngster, is also screaming for Vision Zero, like we are all screaming here for Vision Zero. One of the explanations um, is a behavioral explanation, the behavior of youngsters. And then we're coming to the killers in traffic. Like, um, yeah, they are often driving too fast. Um, they are also often keen to drink uh, alcohol when they drive. They are often keen to take some drugs when they are driving. And another uh, killer is, of course, also the distraction. Uh, the fact that they are using their smartphone while driving. This explains, to a certain extent, why they are involved into a large extent into accident rates and into road deaths. But there is much more than this. The way to reach Vision Zero is by applying the safe system approach. We already talked about it, we already discussed about it, and there was even an award dedicated to the safe system approach. But this is a real, a very important approach. So it's not only about changing that behavior, it is also related to four factors, four factors who are in the middle of this approach which are important. Safe roads, safe vehicles, safe speeds, and safe people. These four factors, they are interplaying with each other, they are interwoven with each other, and it are these four factors which are crucial if we, if we want to reduce people who are injured in traffic or people who are dying in traffic. Safe, safe vehicles is of course related to having well-equipped vehicles into our traffic. Safe roads is related to having a good road infrastructure. Safe speeds is related to uh, yeah, the appropriate speed and, of course, also enforcing an appropriate speed limit. And safe roads, is, uh, safe people is related also to yeah, the, the, the behavior of people. You see, in the safe system approach, these four factors are surrounded by a lot of other factors. They are around, uh, surrounded by a lot of other concepts, and I want to pick out three of them. Firstly, I want to raise um, your attention to education and information. For example, if we are educating, if we are informing people, then we need to do it on a tailor-made. Tailor then we need to adapt our education, our information to target groups, to target groups, to age groups. For example, if we zoom into the alcohol statistics, driving under the influence of alcohol, then we see that mainly young men appear also into these statistics. So this means if we're educating, if we're informing, if we are informing people, we need to target ourselves to specific groups. A second one I want to point out is the safe equipment. Then we're talking about yeah, wearing a seatbelt, wearing a helmet. Despite the obligation in the European Union of wearing a seatbelt, there is, however, there are, however, a lot of countries in which we see a lot of differences in wearing a seatbelt. So this remains also, of course, important: wearing your safe equipment, wearing a seatbelt, wearing a helmet. 
A third point I want to point out is having a well thought driving training. We see that these new drivers are often involved into these road tests, so this means also that we need to think over that we have a good well thought driving training, that we also have a good well thought training tests to give them a license in the end. So my presentation began with how do youngsters move in traffic, um, then I went to the accident rates and I told you something about their involvement into accident rates and also their involvement often into road deaths. Um, I gave you some explanations, uh, like the fact they're quite inexperienced, but also behavioral explanations. And I gave you also uh, the solution of a safe system approach, or more or less the way we need to reach vision zero. I want to end with the girl with the red balloon. The girl with the red balloon is expressing some hope. She's a symbol of hope. But we do not need to, yeah, we do not need only to hope. We also need to act, of course. I hope by giving my presentation, by, I hope also by giving uh, you these numbers and also um, yeah, the fact that youngsters are uh, into a large extent involved into uh, accident rates and road deaths, that you will take also this team with you into your daily work, which is related to road safety. So please pay also attention to the youth. We're here with the European Road Safety Charter. We're here almost with the largest uh, road safety community. We all, we, today we have more than 3,800 members in this community and we all want the same. We all want that vision zero and we're all engaging ourselves into that vision zero. A last thing is a sprinkle of hope. So I said already, we do not, need only, we do not only need to hope, we also need to act, which is of course, uh, very important if you want to reach that vision zero. The sprinkle of hope is today for the awards, we saw that a lot of submissions were done uh, which involved projects related to children, pro projects related to youth. So this is quite encouraging. This means that there is a lot of engagement already going on yet into, this, into these topics, into this domain. We saw some applications, uh, gamification, virtual reality, um, projects in which youth uh, invented by themselves or were involved into road safety campaigns. Uh, so also driving trainings. So we saw a lot of submissions which were done related to this target group. Only by the engagement of all of, of, all of us, we will go for that vision zero. But also, Please do not forget to engage the youngsters themselves. Involve them also into the work you are doing because they are also the ones we are talking about. It is only by the engagement of all of us and also of the youngsters themselves that we will reach that vision zero. It is only by this that we will give our youth a colorful future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alison. Thank you for your clear message. Pay attention to youth. Um, and of course, we tell them every day to ride a bike because it's good for the planet. We have an obligation also to make it safer uh, to do so, do so. I myself is a father of a teenage son. I stand at the front door every day. No son, both lights in front and in back and the helmet and all. We all do this. Um, and the stats that you showed, Isabel, of course, or reminded us of, uh, they do cause concern. Uh, the Commissioner also mentioned this in her message. But youth is also, also very interested in technology. Um, either they walk like this across the streets, and that's not good, or it can be used for good. Um, and some of the um, award winners uh, and uh, shortlisted uh, projects have used technology to uh, make it safer for youth. So we now turn to the third category which is indeed, very fittingly, uh, the award for young people. It is uh, the European Year of Youth, and we could not, of course, have uh, a road safety award without a category for young people. So the shortlisted initiatives in this category are Fondation Vinci Autoroute in France, 
with their digital campaign, Le Jeune au Volant, Young People Behind Wheels. This campaign focuses on young people's hyper-connectivity. It's a nice word to put uh, obsession with uh, uh, iPhones, hyper-connectivity, and how the mobile phone is a significant source of driver distraction. The campaign engaged influencers and was broadcasted on YouTube in order to reach young people. The second shortlisted initiative is uh, Platform Vision Zero from Czechia with their initiative entitled Vision Zero for Young Drivers. The project focuses on improving the education, the training and hazard perception of young drivers, uh, including through workshops on traffic psychology by the Czech traffic police and boosting driver skills through driving centers. The third shortlisted project, Humda, from Hungary, um, a project uh, on road safety. Safety comes first. This project uh, included road, show, road shows in various towns in Hungary and offered uh, an accessible and fun learning experience for children involving interactive games, the use of electric minicars and board games. And the fourth shortlisted initiative is Preventiedienst Stad Leuven or Prevention Service of the City of Leuven in Belgium with its uh, serious vi virtual reality game called Verkehr. In this project, 10 to 14 year old children use virtual reality headsets to learn how to ride a bike safely in traffic. The level of difficulty and the different skills they learn are adjusted to the skills of the children. Again, congratulations to all the shortlisted candidates and initiatives. They are sure, surely all of them having an impact on the safety of our children and young people. And the winner is Preventiedienst Stad Leuven. Yeah, so all, to all the parents, here is an alternative for the years spent playing Minecraft <laughs> to actually do something useful. Uh, so, thank you uh, very much. We chose this project um, because um, uh, we wanted to encourage more and more children and young people to, to cycle, of course, in daily life, and the project does exactly that, but it teaches the children how to do so safely. The project provides a very safe learning environment. You can crash. Uh, and then continue, <laughs> um, which is very good. Um, and of course, uh, virtual reality makes this possible. Each student receives a personalized learning pathway. Um, it's also very interesting uh, how different partners each brought their own expertise to the project because Leuven the University was involved uh, for the academic understanding of the pedagogical tools, the Road Safety Foundation uh, for the road safety content, and the schools for the practical implementation. So a very complex but extremely useful and very worthy winner. I would like to involve, uh, invite Els van den Broek to the stage to accept the award.
good afternoon, and thank you so much. We're very grateful that we won this award, not only because it's about road safety, but it's also about cycling. And cycling is fantastic everywhere, too. Uh, it's beneficial for our planet, for our health, our well-being, and it gives happiness to all kinds of people, all ages, including children. And children, we think they have the right to learn it in safe conditions. And that's why Verkeer, or VRKeer, uh, was developed. And so it's a real honor that we won this award because we truly believe that we need an intermediate step in the learning process between the theory and the practice at school and the busy traffic on the streets, which can be dangerous, as we learned. I would like to thank you some partners who made the development of these virtual streets uh, possible. Carol, who really invented and created the game. Um, the city of Bruges for testing the first versions and proving the added value, as you saw. Uh, IMEC, because they enabled us to expand our community through the Smart Education at School program. And the cities of Leuven, Hasselt, Sint-Niklaas, and the province of Antwerp. I forget Brussels, sorry. <laughs> because they make the materials available for schools, so they can rent it and then they can use it in their uh, cycling experience. And we, as Mobile 21, we were uh, privileged to coordinate the team because it was complex <laughs> and also very honored to receive this award in the name of all the team uh, together also with you we hope that we can continue our work and uh, make our shared dream a reality which is a world in which all children can travel safely and actively wherever they want and preferably with a big smile on their face because it's safe thank you so much <laughs> Thank you, Alison. Uh, for sure, we fully uh, share that vision. Thank you to Alice van der Bronck. And we come now to the fourth award for professional drivers. This uh, um, is a category that uh, we think is very important, um, also because there is a shortage of drivers in Europe. Um, many are working on the demanding contracts, need to go fast. Uh, we all have changed our delivery systems with deliveries across the cities and urban areas. And so this is an important category. We have four, well, we have, yes, we have four shortlisted uh, candidates here. So the shortlisted candidates are CCT Correas de Portugal, the postal operator in Portugal with its CTT road safety program. This is a highly um, comprehensive program covering the monitoring of drivers' uh, road safety, the postal workers, their crash investigation, vehicle checks, and behavioral incentives for staff. Also uh, nominated in this category, the Hungarian National Haulage Association, NIT, with its comprehensive uh, competition to find uh, the best Hungarian truck driver. Uh, through this initiative, the association, association aims to improve truck drivers' driving skills through a multi-stage competition involving both theory and practical tests. Thirdly, also nominated here, the Austrian online shopping delivery service, Miam, uh, with its uh, rider safety program. Delivery riders, as I mentioned, uh, are often exposed to very dangerous situations in traffic. They go very fast, they have to, uh, sometimes, and the project here aims to improve the safety of their riders through safety teams that provide advice, safety equipment, and bicycle repairs. And then, fourthly, also nominated here, Acciona uh, Enadia from Spain and its Drive Safe Road Safety Program. This initiative is rolled out uh, to the company's drivers in Spain, but also Chile and Mexico, and includes training, campaigns, equipment improvements, vehicle inspections, and the provision of rescue kits. Again, these are all important initiatives, so let's give a hand to all the shortlisted <laughs> candidates. And the winner is Acciona Energia, Spain.
Again, congratulations to Acciona Energia. Your initiative was chosen and singled out for a number of reasons. First of all, um, we appreciate the full uh, chain approach, meaning that not only the employees are targeted, but also the subcontractors. The program benefits from very strong um, involvement of the company management, and it also uh, reaches the most senior levels in, in your company. It works with key performance indicators uh, for different aspects, uh, making it clear what has worked and uh, what doesn't uh, or needs to be improved. And it can easily be implemented uh, in other markets. And of course, when a big company employing thousands of uh, uh, colleagues take these actions, it has um, a massive effect. So fleet management um, is, is being targeted here. I would like to congratulate you and also invite Miguel Ortiz de la Tierra Imas, the Quality, Safety, Environmental and Social Director of Acciona Energia to come to the stage and accept the award, please. Management team and fellow members of the European Road Safety Awards, I feel privileged to have the opportunity of being recognized for our road safety program, Drive Safe. At Acción Energía, we are determined to create a better planet by putting people at the center of every single thing that we do. Our main business being generating and delivering clean energy to households and industries across more than 20 countries Safety is no longer a priority, but a core value. Priorities may shift while values remain. And producing energy is by all means a risky business. High voltage equipment or working in heights pose serious threats that must and are managed every single day and every single hour of our daily schedule. However, we realized long ago that the most dangerous machine that we use is by far that one with four wheels that takes us home at the end of the day. If we are to put people at the center while keeping safety as a value, we could not but necessarily address this risk with all our efforts and resources. Drive Safe was born four years ago with a holistic approach and with the vocation of generating a double impact. First, during our professional endeavors, and secondly, and equally important, while driving those that we love the most as part of our personal lives. The results so far have been tremendously encouraging. The 80% reduction in car accidents and near misses in Mexico since we deployed DriveSafe is a highly motivating example of what we are capable of achieving. This inspiring award on road safety reinforces the purpose of the complete Acción Energía Drive Safe team, for which we are very grateful and eager to share with any of the more than 4,000 private and public entities that work together under the European Road Safety Chapter. May we all see the day when road safety joins the list of solved challenges by humanity. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Um, and now we come to the uh, place where you get to decide where we empower the audience, uh, because these are four very worthy winners. Um, but we would now like to appoint a winner of the winners. Um, so it is my great pleasure to now introduce the Jacques Barrault Prize, which recognizes outstanding activities in road safety and it will be awarded to one of the four category winners that we have seen today. The Jacques Barrault Prize is the result of a public vote. You will choose it, the audience uh, at the award ceremony, um, as has been the case every year since 2016. The prize is dedicated to uh, Mr. Jacques Barrault, a former commissioner for transport and an ardent supporter of road safety. Mr. Barrault joined the commission 
as the charter uh, was being launched in 24 um, and took a keen interest in its activities and achievements during uh, his time as commissioner um, and beyond until his passing in 2014. He would be extremely impressed by the progress we have made and by the projects that are being highlighted here today. So I now leave it to Alexandra to explain how you will now vote for the winner. Alexandra, please. Thank you. So those, the audience here in the room, as well as the audience online can vote. You can vote using your smartphone, tablet, or laptop. Uh, for those in the room, just a reminder, the Wi-Fi connection is Bluepoint Visitor and no password is needed. And you need to go to www.menti.com. And once you are on the site, you need to enter the pass key for this particular event, which is 12184702 and voting will be open during the Q&A session, which will now follow. Thank you, and good luck to everyone. Thank you, Alexandra. Uh, I just uh, took my uh, mobile phone. Am I allowed to vote as well? Yeah. Thank you. I know who I'm going to vote for, but I shall keep it secret. So I think we now should get ready for a panel for which we would need um, a few chairs on the stage. So um, we will now have a glimpse of uh, behind the scenes of our winners um, of the winning projects. Uh, I am going to invite four people on the stage, but I will wait a second because there are no chairs for them to sit on. <laughs> so bear with us while they are being brought in. <laughs> yeah, you see, you have to sit, sit, sit. <laughs> Things are moving very fast. We are getting ready. So um, I would now like to invite the representatives of the four winners to the stage for a short discussion. So first of all, Anse and Brecht from Zavod Rezevalny Pass. Please join us on stage. <laughs> Carefully leave your prize on the, uh, on the chair. Please take a seat. Secondly, Arno Walter, Initiative for Sigre Straßen. Please join us on stage. You can pick a chair, whichever one you want, whichever one looks best. Uh, thirdly, Karl Bohl from the city of Leuven, please. And then uh, the fourth winner from Acciona Energia, Eloy Jaragiwi Martin, please. So, we are going to invite questions from both our in-person and uh, online audience. So, let me take a chair and a mic. And we can already see the voting ongoing here. Not on the screen, so you can't see it. So, keep voting. The secrets uh, will be kept safe with us. So, uh, prepare your questions, um, but to get things started, um, I want to turn first to, to you, Anze, um, on the rescue lanes, uh, and, and, and ask you, you're a firefighter, you're an ambulance paramedic, how did you work and communicate with police departments, because this is also about traffic rules and the local national authorities about your project. What was, uh, how did you get them to support you um, and get these things uh, done um, in Slovenia, please. 
Uh, yes, I was uh, researching uh, problem why why people don't know uh, how to how to uh, create a rescue line, and um, Slovenia is very small country, and we uh, know each other. Uh, yes, okay, sorry for my English. <laughs> okay, so you called them up and said, I need your help. Yes, I, I uh, ask him he, uh, them uh, for for helping for uh, telling people drivers how to create a rescue line. And you say it's a small country. You are very modest. It's a beautiful country as well. You explained to me that your roads are rather narrow, also. Uh, so for you, it's absolutely crucial that vehicles move to the side. There is no emergency lane, or it's too narrow. You got to go through the middle. Yes, uh, this is the optimum system for, for our uh, highways um, <clears throat> because we have um, in 20% of highways in Slovenia, we have, uh, we have not uh, hard shoulder uh, emergency line on the right and we need a rescue line on the middle. And, and last question in this round, get ready for other questions. You're doing well. But now the difficult one. How do you know that it's worked, that it's made a difference? Uh, I'm in contact with, with our, my colleagues in paramedic, in firefighter, policemen. Uh, they, they told me about that that's improvement. It's C. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Ganze. I have a last difficult question, which I will keep for you in the second round. So don't relax entirely. Let's turn to Arno. Uh, how do you encourage road users? You have an app. How do you make sure that people know about it, that this is uh, something they can, they can do, um, uh, go in and signal a, a, um, a hotspot on an app rather than posting some angry uh, video to YouTube with a GoPro camera uh, of some crazy motorist, uh, etc. How do you get that information out for people to be constructive and use your app rather than just uh, other, other ways? Yes, that's indeed a challenge with all the other media uh, out there, but uh, um, we work a lot uh, through um, newspapers, um, local newspapers in, in, in the cities, and we've got several partner cities um, that help us distributing the message. Also, we've got actually the cities them, themselves um, that start to partner with us, and they spread the message through their channels. But we are also very uh, happy that uh, we've got a few, um, well, some institutional, but also personality partners um, that are famous in Germany. We need some European uh, famous uh, persons as well um, to go when we go abroad. But um, they help us to spread the messages as well, like the president of the German Road Safety Council, for example, or a few comedians um, that are well known in Germany, and they help us to, to spread the message in different audiences. And to do that, do you think of coming up with a catchy brand name, uh, Initiative of a Sikra Straße? Uh, it might be a bit heavy for some. If you have an app, are you going to come up with a catchy four-letter word? That's definitely something we need to work on in the next couple of weeks, yes. Uh, typically, the, you know, often we just call the initiative right now, but it's uh, definitely not then meaningful enough for what... For what for what we do, so we need to find another acronym that's, that's true. That's All right, so then there's another competition starting right now. Um, last question, curious about uh, the take-up already. So it's Germany-wide, yes? Um, can you give us a figure of how many hotspots have been signaled or how many declarations have been made so far? Um, and maybe if you have, do you already gather statistics on follow-up taken by authorities uh, to, to this. So give us a, an idea of how widespread this already is. We, we started actually with the two, two test cities. Okay. We started with two test cities, um, uh, Bonn, because we are based in the city of Bonn, and, and Aachen, because we wanted to know about the, the uh, because our first partner is the um, University of Aachen. And we wanted to know about the quality of the road uh, user reports. And uh, within just uh, two, three months, 
we had about um, 3,000 uh, road user reports in, well, ex well, actually hotspots, and it was about 5,000 road user reports because sometimes you can just support one of the... Of the for what period? In two months. Um, in those both cities. And um, that showed us that actually the, the quality of the user reports was really high and uh, there was nobody playing a game and, and making fun out of this because the topic is just too serious. And um, then just last year we started spreading the message all across uh, Germany and now we've got about uh, 50,000 uh, road user reports across Germany. Uh, it's not enough, it's still growing, but uh, it's already quite a considerable number that we want to build on. Thank you very much, Arno, and uh, send me an email when you, the app comes to Brussels, right? Uh, because then uh, you'll start getting uh, clicks from, uh, from Brussels. And, and if you, you see uh, a concentration of clicks uh, between uh, Bois de la Combe and uh, the European Commission, uh, that's me. <laughs> All right, questions? Get ready, uh, we will have a, another round. But let's turn now to Karl um, and to, uh, to Leuven. Uh, so these kids with their screens on, um, first of all, do they take it seriously? Uh, or should they take it seriously? Um, and how do you sort of adapt uh, this software you have to every single, single child? And I'm also curious, I'm sure many of you are also curious, how different is it to sit there with a virtual screen. I've tried one. I have a son who's old enough to have a virtual reality headset at home. And after five minutes, I was dizzy and uh, had to take it off. <laughs> but but um, how real is it really for the kids? And how much is that experience uh, something that you can take with you uh, to real life cycling? Carl. Um, there's, these are a lot of questions, but um, <laughs> I'll try to answer the last one. Um, when you put on a, a VR headset, you really think you're in this virtual world and you're going to act like that. So um, we're um, creating this for children. It's not the idea to scare them for life, never to take a bike again, of course. Uh, so we had to adapt the amount of realism uh, to make it um, playful, but also um, it is a real learning experience, so they really learn uh, about how to be uh, to take into account um, to watch over your shoulder uh, and, and so on. So it's really an. Uh, and this a you see, yeah. You see, yeah. You yeah. monitor that if yes. uh, they are not. Uh, yeah, we, we track uh, different uh, actions from them, and therefore we can actually through learning analytics we can know for sure uh, which individual student. Uh, masters which skills. How do they react when they crash? They think it's funny. <laughs> um, no, they, uh, we, we, we created some um, you know, a crash scene which is, uh, gives you an idea, okay, I didn't do well, but um, it's not scary. Eh? As I told before, it's not the idea to scare them. But they have to learn that there was something wrong. Um, but they, then they get feedback on what they did wrong and what they did uh, well, and then they can try again. So it's really the idea to have lots of opportunities to make mistakes, which is not possible in real life, but they can do it in VR. That's why we create this. And of course, there's nothing wrong with learning from your mistakes and having fun, as long as you do learn from your mistake. Then it's, the idea is not to scare the kids away from this. Uh, we, we tested it in, an, in an, a scientific study and we saw that also the interest in uh, safety and, and hazard perception, situation awareness was increased. So normally it isn't, uh, it, they, it, this topic doesn't interest them as much, but while playing through VR, their interest was increased. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, again, if you have questions, keep them uh, ready uh, for Carl, but let's turn to you, Aloy. From adults to from from kid, kid, kids to adults, okay. my question to you is: So you have a program educating your drivers. Yes. What do you do if they keep making mistakes? Uh, and 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 this is now company policy. Yeah, yeah, of course. What uh, uh, what what sort of actions do you take for employees who repeatedly make mistakes on the road? I will be very glad to say that we do not make mistakes, but we make mistakes every day, that's, and that's absolutely. 
it's, it's very simple, it's very easy, it's very easy. we just uh, learn from lessons. It's, uh, uh, we report absolutely any incident that we have regarding with the car. Uh, it doesn't mind if it is, has been very serious or it has been something very light. And uh, it's fully investigated, not by the safety people, by the, by the boss, by the managers. And we record it and then we implement the lessons learned that, that we have, uh, that we have uh, investigated and we have concluded. So, and that's it, more or less. We just learn from any experience that we have had wherever we, we have been. Uh, take note that, uh, uh, well, Acción Energy is known because of uh, their wind farms. And when you see a wind farm, everybody here will say, oh, very dangerous side with fall protection risk, electrical risk. But all, we always forget about the most serious risk that we have is the one related with the car. Because it's something that we do every day, and it's not only done by the mechanical employees, it's also done by the uh, person that works in the administration department. And so for us, it was very, very, very critical to focus on try to give high importance to any incident that we have regarding with the car. So cars are more dangerous than windmills. I think statistically you are probably right uh, about that. Um, very good. Uh, thank you to all the panelists. Now is the chance to ask questions. Um, and before I open up for questions from the audience, uh, also an apology to all the women in the room. This is, uh, uh, of course, uh, not balanced. Um, so uh, that is a, a coincidence. Uh, hopefully you saw the winners are more balanced and the speakers. Uh, but therefore, if there are uh, any in the audience um, of a different gender than the one represented on the stage, uh, then you are most welcome to speak up and take the floor and ask questions. So please, uh, that doesn't mean men cannot ask questions. Of course you can as well. So, questions from the audience. Raise your hand and a mic will come to you. Yeah, there is a gentleman there and a lady there. Perfect. We'll start with the gentleman, but the lady will be right after. Ah, okay. The gentleman leads, uh, yields to the lady. So, over there, please. Yeah. And please indicate to whom you would like to address the question. So, there was a bit of a problem with the mics now. It's working. Ellen Townsend from the European Transport Safety Council. Um, thank you very much. Uh, great prize winners, and it's really difficult to choose who to, who to give the extra award to. Um, yeah, we know that uh, about one in three deaths occur whilst driving for work or to and fro from work. So I wanted to ask um, the colleague from the uh, Spanish energy company. Eloy. Exactly. I, I missed the name. Eloy. Eloy. Call me Eloy, that's my second name, Eloy. because it's Howdy and it's impossible to pronounce, okay. so don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, you said you had KPIs, so which, what are they exactly, and do you, do you actually publish them in your annual reports? Um, we, have not, we have not published yet, because, because we are just now calculating, and we are just uh, seeing if these KPIs are the right ones because uh, we do not want to publish something that perhaps only for one or two years of experience that perhaps is not robust enough to be published. But uh, in terms of what kind of KPIs, the, well, you can imagine, number of uh, accidents that we have had depending on the number of work at hours, because that is very, uh, it's very important to relative, relative the number of cases to the number of hours that you are exposed to. It's not only because if we are a huge company, uh, it's true, and that means that we uh, should have, let's say, not more, but uh, we can have more incidents than the ones that a very little company with very few employees could have. Second, what kind of uh, training records we have, been, uh, we have been put in place, I mean, the percentage of employees that have attended to the training courses that we have implemented. Second, or third, sorry, the number of non-conformities or number of, um, yeah, let's say, yeah, non-conformities or alerts that we have identified in all the different sites that we have all over the world. Okay, those are more or less. How many UK 
APIs are we talking about? Number? No, 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 more, no more than four. Right, yeah. Okay. There's not 40, it's three. Not, okay. Mm. I had a question about sort of the, the scrutiny. Do your drivers uh, react to sort of privacy, stop monitoring, Big Brother, things like that, or this is accepted? We have not had any, any problems regarding with that. I must say that every people have, accept, have accepted that uh, safety driving is a priority and no critique, no, no comments. It's true that when we have a background where safety, war-related safety, uh, occupational safety is a must, is a top priority in our company, then the environmental or the company's culture is very easy to implement these kind of programs. Mm -hmm. But uh, by the moment, no, no one has, has said absolutely nothing, no comments. You need more KPIs and then they'll come. <laughs> Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, so oh, okay. now to the gentleman who is a real gentleman, uh, it's your turn to ask a question. Hi, uh, Sam Wade from the Road Safety Authority in Ireland. My question is for Arno. Um, in regard to the app, uh, there's many apps now um, have push notifications for to tell you there's a speed camera um, coming ahead. And that's a good thing, actually. That's, because that does change behavior um, in a possibly reactive, but it's still in a positive way. Does your app, or have you plans for your app to have a push notification for those uh, hotspots, uh, collision hotspots that if you're a tourist or a visitor or even a citizen that's not familiar with the region you're in, that there's a push notification to suggest that you're approaching a collision hotspot and beware. Um. Yes, th thanks for the question. That's exactly one of the applications we are currently working on and we have developed that actually already for cyclists. So if you're a cyclist uh, going to school or, or, or to work, um, you are already notified on the dangerous spots and we also um, give uh, advice for safer routes that you might take instead of uh, crossing very dangerous uh, crossings on, on, on your way. Um, yeah, so for cyclists that exists already, but uh, we will also start developing that for other road users. It's a, yeah, it's a very important application, but uh, it should not be distracting. So we have to be careful and uh, see how we want to implement it, that it's not distracting because yeah, distraction is one of the dangerous factors as we also saw before in one of the presentations. Thank you, and uh, I mean, this is looking into the future of connected uh, driving, uh, indeed, where our cars will tell us these things. Uh, watch out, slow down, hotspot coming up. Okay. So preparing for that, and I would suggest we shouldn't wait 10 years for this. Huh? Uh, this is uh, something that should come soon. Okay, um, I do believe I remember. Yes, please, sir, you have the floor. And a micro, I hope, coming up. And remember to who you would like to address the question. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Jesus Monclus from AFRE Foundation, one of the national relays. This is an open question, building on a previous comment. I would like to see if you see gender differences in maybe your education at the schools or in your drivers in the companies. And I was wondering whether this gender leadership could be also a category for, for next year's awards. Thank you. Gender is an excellent candidate for a category next year. Please, uh, uh, team, uh, which, by the way, consists of three very skilled ladies, as you can see here. And in my department, the majority of colleagues are women. Uh, so just to put that, I think I'd, I'd like to address your question to Carl, because it's at young age you see these things. Eh? Do you already see a difference between girls and boys? No. <laughs> um, we, we did, as I told you, we, told, we did an uh, academic study on the results, and there is no difference at all of, uh, in gender. So there is no, uh, there is, there's a, a difference in um, whether they have already played virtual reality. There's no difference in gaming experience, not in age, not in gender. So actually, that's a good thing. It is a good thing. It is a good thing. I'm also tempted to ask you the question, Eloy. No, no, we have not, uh, we have not identified absolutely any difference. We have uh, both uh, percentage of male and female in our staff. 
And uh, no, we have not identified any conclusion that says that uh, it's any kind of deviation from one gender to the other one. No, no. Answer. More women than men blocking the middle of the road? <laughs> uh, I don't see any difference. <laughs> Same. <laughs> So we have just right here on stage killed the stereotype, yeah? Thank you. Except we are all men sitting here. That is still a problem. <laughs> so more work to be done. All right. Um, uh, I see a hand raised. Yes, yes, please. Madame, you have the floor. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Lacroix. I come from the German Road Safety Council. And first of all, congratulations to all winners. Really impressive uh, initiatives and uh, projects. Uh, concerning the Sichere Straße, yes, I, I'm living in Bonn and uh, I checked it also. It's very impressive. My question is, um, maybe we can talk later on about this, but generally speaking, um, do you see more uh, people um, um, uh, uh, putting reports uh, in, in the app or in the system uh, being cyclists or uh, is there a balance between the type of road users? Because if you have, for example, too many bicyclists, uh, and I can imagine that in Bonn every cyclist will uh, give uh, their comments, yes, <laughs> uh, and less the car drivers, maybe then it, the, the, the so-called hotspots, which are really high-risk sites. Um, then uh, will be not really representing the, the, the reality. Yes, because it's more subjective. That's very interesting also because what is hot for cyclists may not be hot for cars. Uh, so if there are different hotspots, uh, how do you, do you analyze that, I guess, Arno? Uh, yes, we, we do analyze that. And indeed, there's, um, there are some more reports by cyclists and pedestrians, so the vulnerable road users that are more in danger, they tend to report more. But we use different data sources, so the road user reports is one of the important data sources, but we also use the collision data from the police, which is across all the road user types. And we use also the kinematic data, so harsh braking maneuvers or evasive maneuvers coming from the cars or smartphones, which are taken also in, in the car. And this tends to be uh, rather maneuvers then from, from, uh, from cars or trucks or from, from other vehicles. So I think it, overall, using all the different data sources, it, it evens out. Um, more or less, because we merge all these different data streams and calculate one uh, danger score based on these different data streams. And so it's merged into one. And well, you can separate them individually and look at them individually. But uh, in general, it evens out once you merge all the different, uh, the different um, data streams. Thanks a lot, Arno. And let's please remember the alternative are angry videos on YouTube. So. Uh, this can only improve, uh, and it seems to be great. Um, friends, colleagues, time is running, um, and uh, I just want to check with the control tower whether there is any burning question from our online audience. We've had good questions from, from the room. Any questions uh, that the control tower wishes to pass on to the panelists from uh, our online viewers? Um, we're running a little bit over, but I think we can squeeze in uh, one, line, one online question. So I will choose, um, firstly, thank you for an interesting conference. Um, do you think there will be some unanimous traffic legislation in the European Union? And it's quite a broad question. Which of the four panelists is this question addressed to? I think, I think it's, to the, it's to the stage. Unanimous EU uh, traffic, say again, traffic what legislation? Unanimous traffic legislation in the European Union. Oh, unified traffic rules. Is that what uh, we're I mean, we doing driver licenses and things like that, but traffic rules are national. Are we looking for harmonized traffic rules? Is that what the question is about, you think? <laughs> Who knows? I, th I think it, it means um, coherent and uh, universal across Europe. Okay, let me, let me try and direct that question to Anze. 
because in your country, Slovenia, you want to go through the middle. I'm Danish. Um, I'm not sure my compatriots would know this. So when they come and visit your beautiful country, how do they know that they're supposed to go in the middle? I think instinctively, they would say there's an emergency lane to the right. So safety also comes from harmonization, but we are not, of course, harmonizing traffic rules entirely across Europe. So how do foreigners know in Slovenia? Uh, we have some transparent on the highway, like uh, Germany, Austria, uh, Croatia, um, and many other countries. Italy, I didn't know for Danish, that's not the middle line, uh, Hungary, Romania, uh, we need we need same rules in emergency case, yes, uh, for, for emergency line or uh, rescue line we need same rules for every country. Indeed. Indeed, and uh, I would say to you, Arno, of course, also um, foreign drivers um, should also be covered by a system driving in Germany, knowing the hotspots and being able to declare. So these are issues we struggle with uh, in, in our department at the Commission every, every day to make sure that uh, some of these improvements are applicable. I, I turn to my right, any of you who would want to give a go at this very broad question? <laughs> All right. <laughs> We'll just propose some more legislation and things are going to be fine. <laughs> On that happy note, uh, thank you to all the panelists. Um, one of you will be coming back uh, to claim the Jacques Perrault Prize. But before that happens, uh, thank you very much. Please uh, applaud the audience. Thank you very much. Now remove the ch we leave the chairs. I look at the uh, we leave the chairs. All right, okay, time is running. Um, so now we come to uh, the final announcement. Uh, thank you, all of you, for voting for the Jacques Barreau Prize. Uh, the votes have been counted. This is like Eurovision. I look at the control tower. Uh, Bjorn Ola or whatever is the name. Is the vote correct? Do we have a valid winner? Winner? Yes. Thank you from the control booth. Um, so, we are very pleased to announce that the, and I don't know, but I'm getting the uh, certificate now, so I will find out now. Aha! Now I know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the winner um, of the 2022 Jacques Barrault Prize is... Initiative for Sticker Straße. As I said to Arno, expectations cannot now be any higher. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, organizers, I believe this concludes the program. Uh, so to the online viewers, thank you so much for having followed uh, this award ceremony. Thank you to the panelists for having uh, um, accepted to participate. Of course, you are winners. So uh, uh, it's only fair that you share with us this experience. Congratulations to the, to the organizers. Uh, thank you to my team, as always, for the impeccable preparations. Um, and with that, um, well, tell us what you think. Scan this for feedback. Um, there is going to be a drink afterwards. To those online, help yourself. Uh, <laughs> to those in the room, um, please join us. And with that, thank you very much.
So, uh, 